Today we learned about L'Hopital's rule, which was a way of using a derivative to evaluate a limit of a particular indeterminate form. Let's think about this limit. This is a limit we've seen before. We've already seen that this is equal to 1. And the proof we saw involved uh, a lot of trigonometry, <laughs> maybe, maybe an uncomfortable amount of trigonometry. We can do it really easily using L'Hopital's rule. So the first thing to know is that we're allowed to use L'Hopital's rule because we have this indeterminate form 0 over 0. What that means is if I take the limit of this top function, that limit is 0 as x goes to 0, and if I take the limit of the bottom function, that limit is also 0. We can use L'Hopital when we have the indeterminate form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, but that's it. Any other indeterminate form, we either have to find another way to take it or we have to do some algebra to sort of massage the two functions into this kind of indeterminate form. So here's what L'Hopital's rule says we can do. It says this limit is the same as the limit of the derivative over the derivative, provided that at the end we're going to get some limit that exists. So I differentiate the top, I get cosine x. I differentiate the bottom, I get 1. And notice I didn't differentiate this as one function. I split it into the numerator's function and the denominator's function. So there's no quotient rule or anything. It's just the numerator, the denominator separately. And this limit is pretty easy. Cosine of 0 is just 1. So that means this limit is 1, which is something that we already knew, but we did it this time without uh, drawing a bunch of triangles. Let's look at a more difficult indeterminate uh, limit. Let's look at, let's look at this limit uh, and try and figure out what form it's in. So when x goes to 0, e to the x goes to 1. So this thing that's being raised to a power, that looks like 0. And then as x goes to 0, x goes to 0. So the form we have, my function is going to look like the form of 0 to the 0 because this bit looks like it's going to 0, and this bit looks like it's going to 0. And this is an indeterminate form. Remember, if these were actually the numbers, 0 to the 0, this would be 1. Anything, any number to the power 0 is 1. But 0 to any power other than 1 is 0. So there's sort of a question over which wins. Anything to the power 0 is 1, but 0 to most powers is 0. So which one does it look like? Does it look like 1? Does it look like 0? It could also look like something in between. But this isn't the kind of indeterminate form that we can immediately apply L'Hopital to. So we're going to need to make some adjustments. So let's call this function y. And the problem is I have a power, and I don't know what to do with a power. But I'm fine with multiplying and dividing. So the trick that turns a power into a coefficient is to take the natural log. So the natural log of y, this is going to be the natural log of e to the x minus 1 to the x. Now because this power is inside the log, I can bring it out x times the natural log of e to the x minus 1. Now let's see what happens. If x goes to 0, this first bit goes to 0, and this second bit goes to minus infinity, because when x is 0, e to the x is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. Log of 0 is undefined, but it has a vertical asymptote there where log tends to minus infinity. So we have a different indeterminate form now. Our indeterminate form now is 0 times infinity. We don't care about the plus or minus. We can figure that out. So what we have to do is we have to do some algebra to get this into either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And we can do that by just, instead of multiplying by something, you divide by its reciprocal. So instead of multiplying by x, I can divide by 1 over x. And now my form is infinity over infinity. Because the top we already saw is going to minus infinity as x goes to 0. And that bottom is 1 over x. As x goes to 0, 1 over x by k goes to positive or negative infinity. So now this is something I can use L'Hopital on. So the limit as x goes to 0 of the natural log of y is the limit as x goes to 0. From this point, we just did algebra. Log. And since this has the proper form, 
This has the form infinity over infinity. We can use L'Hopital on it. So this is still the limit as x goes to 0 of the derivative over the derivative. So the bottom has an easier derivative to take. It's just minus x to the minus 2. For the top, we have to chain rule. The derivative of log x is 1 over x. But this is an x. It's e to the x minus 1. So we have to multiply by its derivative. Let's clean this up a little. This becomes minus x squared e to the x divided by e to the x minus 1. And this is still of the form 0 over 0. And it doesn't look like we can maybe simplify that away. But what we can do is we can take L'Hopital again. It doesn't matter that it used to be infinity over infinity and now it's 0 over 0. That's fine. We still have our limit. Now I take the derivative of the top on the top and the derivative of the bottom on the bottom. Bottom's a little easier. The top is going to require some product rule. The first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And now what I get is something I can actually evaluate. If I plug in 0, the bottom is 1, and the top, because of these x's, is 0. So the limit as x goes to 0 of log of y is 0. We're not exactly done yet because log of y is not what we wanted. We just wanted y. So in order to undo log, I have to take a power of e. This is what I wanted, which is the same as this, right? e and log cancel. And I know when x goes to 0 what happens to log y. When x goes to 0, log y is 0. So this whole bit looks like e to the 0, which looks like 1. So my limit is 1.